Coming up today, oh my goodness. Ashley Judd suffers a horrifying accident, and the details of what she went through are just unbelievable. Then, from side hustles to their hit show, I'm talking about it all with the fabulous ladies of The Real. And a local woman is helping you transform ordinary jeans into one-of-a-kind creations. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Hello, Blaine. Well, Healy, Detroit Lakes, Rochester. Welcome to the Jason Show. We are live from our studios in the Twin Cities. I'm Jace. We're kicking it old school today. Kendall is off, so please welcome my original sidekick sister. We just call her original recipe around here. Oh, I'll take Not it. Not extra crispy. It's Shane Wells, everybody. Good morning. I don't mean to name me after chicken, but I mean your original recipe. Most people like fried chicken. Most people do. So I'll take it. So it's a compliment. I'm okay with it. As I long as it. I don't have any of the veiny red stuff, and you know. Yeah, I get it, girl. Yeah, I, we look, won't go into details. You look fabulous. Hey, thanks. I was just gonna, your hair? Last time I was here, you had the hair drama. Yeah. And it's getting pretty long. I, it's getting pretty long. I'm growing it out. It looks and good. Uh, I have, thank you. And I have a, I have a new, thank you. Uh, and I, it won't move until 2022, but, uh, but no, I, uh, uh, mermaid who used to cut my hair for 20 years. I call her Mer, uh, cause she believed in mermaids. Right. She went back out to sea. So I had to find someone new. So now I go to Megan, who's fantastic. And it's hard to find, we talked about this. It's, it's hard to find a new stylist and now we're in love and I love Megan and, uh, yeah. You will not be releasing her anytime soon. No, I will not. <laughs> uh, I love her too. Let's go to the audience. Let's welcome Lindsay, everybody. Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay, uh, I hear you are you're right down the road from us. You're in Chanhassen. Is that right? I can't hear him. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Lindsay. You're not missing anything. Don't worry about it. She can't hear me. <laughs> the control room will get that fixed. But trust me, Lindsay's coming to us from Chanhassen. Okay, now Shane. Have you heard me talk about this movie, uh, Barb and Star, Go to Vista Del Mar? I am watching it this weekend. You've watched it? I've watched it. I've watched Tell it me five times now. Okay, so it's good. Well, I think it's good. Half of the audience watching thinks it's trash. <gasps> but it's very odd. And I said this. I've said this many times. It's not for everybody. It's a weird sense of humor, weird jokes, non sequiturs, awkward. Well, one woman a couple days ago was so mad that I recommended it. She demanded $20 from oh. me from Venmo. But there's always a silver lining. Are you ready? I got an email this morning from Leanne Schumacher. Okay. She's paying me $2 on Venmo because she said the movie changed her life. <laughs> so she's giving me $2. So now I will not accept it. It's very sweet. Hole. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm only 18 in the hole. <laughs> I know because Jeff, executive producer Jeff goes, did you give the viewer $20? I go, no. What a bad precedent. Well, if I don't like something and people try it, they're going to want me to pay for it? You're going to be making it rain I'm out gonna here. I'm going to be making it rain nope. all the time. No. But no, Leanne was very sweet. Gave me $2. She said that she needed it. The movie cheered her up. And that's what it did for me. And last night, we watched it during girls' night with my friends, uh, Jen and Lisa La Corsier. Uh, and we laughed. <laughs> oh, gosh, we laughed. And I feel like you definitely need a beverage for that. Sure do. Is that right? Okay. Would, it could help. It could help, yeah. <laughs> we might have had one cocktail last night, a little uh -huh. winter cocktail. Sure. But uh, anyway, so it's good. Go rent okay. it. Uh, you can wait until it's cheaper because it's twenty dollars to rent. That's expensive. Is it on any service or is every it just... most services? Yeah, Google but Play for twenty dollars. For twenty dollars, so you can wait. I have there. not had much entertainment in the last ten months, so yeah. I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're gonna entertain you today and Thank you. you. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. We're rolling, everybody. <laughs> 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 This first story is Nutter Butters. Ashley Judd is revealing new details about her near brush with death while on a recent uh, trip in the Congolese rainforest. On Instagram, she posted that she shattered her <gasps> leg in a, look at this picture. No. Everybody come back to the TV. You gotta see these pictures. She shattered her leg in a freak accident. She said she remained on the forest floor for five hours. 
Five, oh. Just think, let's stop right there. With a shattered leg. Five hours. That's putting up with this show five times in a row before oh. a doctor came. He then adjusted her broken bones back oh. into position. No. Uh, and I heard he did that twice. He had to do that twice. Then six men carried her for three hours. Okay, you following me? Before loading her onto a motorbike where she had to hold her leg in place. She had to hold her leg together for six hours. In total, I know <laughs> Lindsay is going like this. I, Lindsay looks like a flight attendant on a shaky plane. <laughs> in total, it took 55 hours to get her to safety. She says without all of the help she received, she would likely have lost her leg or even died from internal bleeding. She is recovering now in South Africa. Um, you know what this says to me? First of all, by the grace of God, she's all right. Also, she is a bad blank. That is, she is tough as nails. I have I am, so many questions. I have so many too. I am such a, I am such a, I have no pain tolerance. <laughs> you? Uh, I know, it's shocking, isn't it? Huh. I would have just, I would have ran into a tree. I would have just, I've been like, I'm done. <laughs> just leave me here. So was she alone? Initially, uh, or did someone I, have to go get help? Because I'm curious, I think she like, was laying there alone. for I think five she, hours. I think she was walking alone. She does this all the time. She is a big advocate for uh, for uh, climate change. She's a big she travels. She does a lot of charitable work in in the environmental sphere. So she's in this area of the globe a lot. So she probably thought, hey, I've done this before. I could do it again. She's adventurous. But my goodness, add up all of that. I couldn't even, the motorbike for six hours. No, I would just find a panther and let that panther eat me. <laughs> come here, come here, just eat me, I'm done. It's over. It's over, I, I couldn't do it. No, I don't think most people could. No, you are holding your leg together on a bike. I mean, at that point, she had already been going through this for like 12 oh, yeah. hours. No, so Ashley, <gasps> you, you are tough as nails and just get better, I love her. I just, and that family, man. My family has had its share of. They've had it rough. Yeah. And you see these stories all the time about people getting injuries on sets, and you kind of like, oh, yeah. I wonder Mer if this is a little bit for press. That one is not. No, no. No. Next in the dish, uh, Happy and Shooter are talking trash again. In honor of the 25th <laughs> anniversary of Happy Gilmore, Adam Sandler released a Twitter video showing he can still swing a club. Look at this. Okay, it's been 25 years since I've done this. Let's see what happens. I'm scared. Shooter McGavin, this is for you. And I'm not lying to you, that is smashed. Smashed. And that went pretty well. You're dead, Shooter. <laughs> nice drive, Gilmore. 25 years, huh? Let's see if it's uh, Shooter's Tour. Check it out. Oh yeah, it's all about the short game. Drive for show, putt for the dough. Money, shooter, still got it. That's right, oh. Chris that's Christopher McDonald, I love him, who played Shooter, uh, also joined in the fun. The movie debuted February 16th, 1996, and has gone on to become a cult favorite. Just a favorite. I mean, people love. Oh yeah, I think still Adam use movies? lines from yeah. this movie. Go to your home. Yeah. I say that all the time to my kids. <laughs> I love that. Go to your home. Um, you say yes. that to your kids. I'm I do. That is do. that is their home, FYI. Just I'm like, <laughs> go to Auntie Jason's. <laughs> He'll lose you quickly. Yet. Yeah, I'm too scared to try that. We'll that, wait a few more years. Yeah. Next in the, they're more easily found. When they're not three. Yeah. yeah. Next in the dish, Cruella Deville is back. The trailer for the crime comedy Cruella uh, just dropped. I'm watching it with you. I purposely didn't see it yet. Uh, it's Emma Stone. Look at this. From the very beginning, I realized I saw the world differently than everyone else. That didn't sit well with some people. But I wasn't for everyone. I guess they were always scared that I'd be a psycho. <laughs> but a new day brings new opportunities. And 
I was ready to make a statement. How does the saying go? I am woman, hear me roar. Corella going to be released in May. Okay, I, you know what? That looks good. I was, <laughs> I'm apprehensive about this because here's my really quick take. I don't like a lot of origin movies about villains. I think part of what makes a good villain a villain and a good villain is mystery. And if you know every motivation of their backstory, it takes away some of the horror to me. Like, you know, the Joker in Batman or in Dark Knight. Part of the reason he was terrifying was A, Heath Ledger, and number two, he kept changing his backstory. You know what I mean? And it made his evil more mysterious. But this is supposed to be a comedy. It's Cruella DeVille. It's 101 Dalmatians. Okay, I like it a little better than I thought I would. You? Yeah, you're thinking too hard. It's I Emma know. Stone. Check. Okay. I'm there. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Shane. Easy. That's a quote. Jason, you're thinking too hard. <laughs> Said by no one ever. <laughs> Lindsay, how do you think? Did you see it? What do you think, what do you think of Emma Stone as Cruella DeVille? Um, I'm really excited to see that. I agree with Shane on this one. Okay, don't overthink it, Lindsay, is what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and really quick, we got to go. I saw your face with the Ashley Judd story. How, how nutter butter is that story, Ashley? That, that's, that's crazy. I know. Six hours or five hours, what, what, five or six hours. That's that's insane. No, I no one could do that but her. She's superhuman. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Lindsay's gonna stay oh. right there. We have a lot more to come, everybody. Stay right there. We'll be back right after these words. Let's make it a good day. The hot dish is still hot. Coming up next, another old Letterman interview is coming under criticism, and this time it's his chat several years ago with Paris Hilton. But people are taking a second look at it. And my take. Ladies, how are you? Then, the ladies of The Real are real busy. I'm talking to them about the rest of their season and all of their exciting side hustles. And they have a lot of them. And that old jean jacket still has life. Meet the local woman who can turn denim into dynamic new pieces for your wardrobe. That and more when The Jason Show continues. Uh, hello, may I speak to Mrs. Potenza, please? Who's calling? This is uh, Tom. I'm calling from uh, the vaccination center, convention center. Oh, yeah. Is this Conchetta? Right. Is this Conchetta? Conchetta. Conchetta. Uh, hello, Miss Conchetta. I uh, was calling to just confirm that you will be coming to the convention center tomorrow at 3.30. No, not tomorrow, the 23rd of February. Oh, the 23rd. Okay, well, okay. I'm... The, 23rd, the 23rd at 3.30. We just have a few Don't questions. Don't change it. Don't start changing everything. Would you like here? Have you had any sniffles? No. Uh, aches? No. Have you had fever? No. Itchy earlobes? I haven't had anything. Would you say your, Nothing. your libido has increased since getting the vaccination? Jimmy, is this you, you little <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. I love Aunt Chippy. Jimmy having some fun with Aunt Chippy. God, I love her. We all need an Aunt Chippy. <laughs> My mom would say that so to me, fun. though, if I if I pranked her. Oh, yeah. She'd call me all sorts of little names. Have you tried that yet? Uh, well, no, I pranked our boss a couple days ago. That went well. Oh, I'm I, sure. I called our boss. Well, I tried to call you live, and right. he rolled me I into voicemail. Yeah, because I fire Kendall every other day. And right. by the way, I did. that's not why she's here today, <laughs> not here today. But I fire every other day, and when I do, I, I jokingly, and sometimes I really do call you. Do you know uh, who told me about that? Who? My dad. Oh, really? He was watching. He's like, yeah, he tried to call you Yeah. after he fired Kendall. Yeah, I do. So my dad let me know that you We're working me. on getting a standee when I get mad at her, and we just bring the standee in for the rest of the show. You got a few in the room. Yeah. I'll get Tyler to come in. Yeah. <laughs> More late nights. SNL cast member Keenan Thompson was on with Fallon, and he talked about, and I love that he got a show. This guy deserves everything. He's worked so hard. He got a new sitcom, uh, debuts next week, and it's appropriately called Keenan, <laughs> uh, where he plays a widower who is a father of two. Look at this. Was it always called Keenan? 
No, it was called like four different things. It was like Saving Larry at first. I was gonna be I was gonna be Larry uh, Biscuits, and uh, that was gonna be <laughs> a stretch for people to you know kind of go along with. I dude, guess. Larry Biscuits, no way you have to put that in the show somewhere, dude. I will play Larry Biscuits, your neighbor. Yeah, of course. We're gonna write that. We're gonna if we get season two, we're gonna write you. You're coming in. <laughs> hey, we always gonna ask you. How did your wife react when you told her that you play, you're playing a widowed father on the show? She's like, she didn't love it. <laughs> <laughs> What'd she say? She, I, she was like, oh, so I'm dead. But I mean, she was just giving me, she was just giving me a hard time. But oh, I was like, yeah, God. I mean, it's not you. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a show. It's a different. Thing. It's a show. <laughs> Keenan says the show reminds him of Keenan and Kel without, well, Kel. <laughs> the show uh, debuts Tuesday on NBC. He deserves it. I said a few seconds ago. That is a guy that you know he's been on SNL for years years and, appre and like appreciates it like he doesn't he doesn't complain about it he's like ah, I don't like it he just I, I I really like him he's he's been on our screen since we were like teenagers exactly I feel like yeah, yeah and he hasn't aged a bit nope like he looks exactly unfair. yeah ex very unfair next in the dish if you spend any time on social media last week you may have come across a David Letterman clip or two there have been calls for him to apologize to Lindsay Lohan Janet Jackson and this interview with Paris Hilton look at this and, and uh, uh, do you, um, uh, ha have your friends treated you differently since you've been out of the slammer? No. <laughs> People think that I was really strong that I went through it, so. God, it was just ugly, wasn't it? Did you, have you, have you made... Uh... But I've moved on with my life, so I don't really want to talk about it yeah, anymore. But, I know. <laughs> I, know. Well, I appreciate that. See so, you know, this is where you and I are different because this is all I want to talk about. That's a 2007 interview after Paris uh, was in jail for violating probation. A recent Glamour magazine article called on Dave to apologize for repeatedly asking about her jail time. Well, this is what I mean. Some days I defend people that get in trouble and some days I'm on the other side and I'm a little on this other side here because this is the problem with blanketing people with blame without doing a little bit of work because Glamour should have done its research along with some other people on the internet because Dave already apologized several years ago. I'm talking many years ago. He talked about that apology and more apologies that he's issued with Oprah back in 2013. Look at this. Does it bother you in general or specifically if you have hurt someone's feelings yeah. With a joke. Yeah. Does it bother you if you have hurt yes. someone's feelings? Yes, it has. Yeah. And, and many times I have called people to apologize. Really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I did have to call and apologize to poor Paris Hilton because she says, I'll talk about anything but being in jail. Oh. And I said, well, that's all I want to talk about. <laughs> and so we, we ran it two or three questions deep, and you know, she, now she starts to do this. And I thought, oh, God, here we go. So I, I called and apologized to her. Uh, and that's just, you know, scratching the surface. <laughs> okay. We'd be here all day if we went through the list. Yeah. Right. He did go, I, and I would encourage everyone who's taking a second look at these interviews, which I think is valid. But there's just a couple of points that I want to make to uh, help you come to a conclusion, because we're going to be, you know, the Internet's going to dredge up a lot of old interviews from all of these people uh, that host shows and drudge up comments people have made. Just a couple points on this. This is a per I'm, I'm showing this because this is a really good example of what I talked about, where nuance, I think, is really needed in these conversations. You can't just blanket blame everybody for old comments. Everybody in every situation is different. There are individuals who are now kind of atoning for their words that only apologize after the scandal hits. That didn't happen here. Dave has, and I've said this, Dave has done the work for years now and has actively, he didn't wait for the scandal to be like, oh crap, I should apologize. Uh, and number two, you know, and I've said this, and, and, and you may disagree, he's a comedian. You know, Perez Hilton that we busted on yesterday, I was on the other side here. Perez Hilton's life, he, he benefited, he's not a comedian. He benefited from just trashing young ladies. Dave is a comedian. And in comedy, there are no victimless jokes. There are no victimless jokes. So I, there's also a little pass that I give to comedians. And I will say this too, and I'll own this. If you're watching the show, you know that I love Dave. Yeah, I have a little bit of a bias when I come to Dave, but I, I hey, I think he was horrible when uh, the, the cheating scandal. I'll call him out when needed. But I'm just using this as an example of in this 
cancel culture era we're in, you can't paint everybody with the same brush and do your homework before you start blaming people because obviously you apologize. What do you want to say? Oh, no, just, yeah, it's hard to believe that Glamour wrote that without just doing one little Google search. Yeah. Something quick would have brought that up for you. He did it. He yeah. apologized with, like you said, without Years. being called to apologize. Yes. Like some other people who I used to capital L love and now I'm cringy about. Uh, Justin Timberlake. It hurts. I know it hurts me too. Ugh. But I hate that's I, I'm on the other side with that one. Yeah. Justin waited. He sure did. He waited until it and it was hot in the kitchen. He's you know it's and been that, a bad year for him. Yes, and that doesn't make it cool. That's not cool. Nope. Dave also apologized to Bieber. He made Bieber cry and called him privately. You know. He owned up. He owned up. He owned his stuff. Lindsay, what do you think? Do you? Uh, yeah. Um. I yeah. Justin. Timberlake, that was, uh, yeah, waiting to the last minute after everything was out in the open. I think that was kind of awful. Yeah. Like, you know, it was obvious that he was just doing it, you know. To for, to react to the scandal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, yep. Lens. Yeah, and it's just, and I get it. And, and, it's, and it's weird, you know, as a guy, I also am very careful with my defense because I'm a guy defending another guy kind of poking at a, at, a, at a woman, you know, a 26-year-old woman. I, I, I'm aware of that. But also, I have to ask the question, too. You know, people are going, oh, it's bullying. And you know how I feel about the overuse of that word. You know, they're both celebrities. I mean, Paris Hilton puts her whole life out there, and she was 26. Is it bullying? You know, because bullying is punching down. And she uh, had just got out of jail uh, and then uh, yeah. goes on a talk show and expects nobody to ask her about it. It isn't really realistic. Yeah. So, again, shades, nuance, yeah. you know. Next in the dish, Wear a helmet, kids. Uh, Aza Gonzalez was on with Kimmel last night. She stars in the new Netflix movie, I Care A Lot, and she talked about a recent Instagram fail. Look at this. Because you posted this video to Instagram. Let's ro roll that video now. Oh my. You want a bike? <laughs> Someone is filming you on the bike. You are oh posing on God. the bicycle. And then you're off the bicycle. All of a sudden, you are now not on the bicycle anymore. <laughs> why, why was that happening in the first place? Uh, well, <laughs> let me explain myself. Okay. I was just enjoying my afternoon with my best friend, Dave. And he was like, oh, she looks like she's having a good time. So I started taking a video. And then you can see that I realize I'm getting, like, someone's taking a video of me. So I want to feel myself. And then I have this cute little cherry bucket hat that I'm like, mm, I'm going to model this. And then I realized I pulled it a little bit too low, so I couldn't see the road. But I, I, I you see it there? <laughs> yeah. But I really committed, and I committed, and then I couldn't grab the handle because I couldn't see it. And then I looked in between that little space, and I saw a car, and then it just went, you know. Dave's fly. lucky he was oh, videotaping. She ended up with a large Walking bruise on her knee. That's uh, it? Uh, that's it. I care lucky a lot. Girl. Debut. So, yeah. We start with Ashley Simpson, or Ashley Judd, and we go to this, <laughs> you know? That's... Oh, I can't she watch laid it. on the pavement for 20 whole minutes yeah. in oh. L.A. <laughs> it's a scary Look at Shane. <laughs> Look at Shane doing the jokes. I love it. No, I, uh, I can't watch it. Oh, I had a friend. We were driving to Michigan City, Indiana, my hometown. His name was Charlie. And I was in the left lane with my, fr with my girlfriends getting Taco Bell at 2 a.m. Because there's nothing better than that. <laughs> and Charlie was in the car next to me. And he, we both went like this. And he turned to wave to us aggressively and he wasn't watching the road and was like, hi, boom, and crashed right no. in front of a car in front of him. Uh, that was 20 years ago, and I'll never forget that. Yeah, eyes on the road, people, eyes on the road. Still ahead, everybody, Kendall visits a local woman who's putting a new spin on denim. But next, I'm talking to the ladies of the reel. We'll show you what they're up to when they're not shooting the show. Look at my giant head. Could they have framed that better? <laughs> my goodness. Welcome. It's like the great Wizard of Oz. We'll be right back, everybody. Big, big potato head. That's a great reference. Playing a little Janet Jackson in the studio today during the commercial break. Miss Janet, if you're nasty, welcome back. It's been a daytime hit since 2014, covering real life issues, entertainment, and everything in between. I, I, gotta, I said this to him, you'll hear me. I always love chatting with the women from The Real. And earlier this week, we talked about the show, Side Hustles. And yes, you're going to see my giant head. Look at this. Ladies, how are you? Hi, how are you We're doing? We're awesome. Good morning. I always, 
I always try to start with a compliment. I, you know, we all do a lot of these. I always, when I see that you guys are on my sheet for, for a day, I know I always look forward to talking to you guys. So hope you're doing oh, well. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, I have to give you a compliment back. I love your specs. Oh, thank you. I know it's They're a little, nice. little peewee. It's the little peewee's playhouse, but you know, I mean, we're getting it done. Oh. We're getting it done. <laughs> fashion, my it's fashion. <laughs> well, let, let me start with you, Adrian. Uh, you guys are doing a lot of special things for February, and I just love yes. it. I, I, I get done with our show, and then I watch you guys. Well, give the folks a preview. What are you guys doing for the rest of the month? Well, obviously, we are celebrating Black History Month, and obviously that is something super important to us, given this amazing platform that we have as a show that celebrates women of color and diversity. It is super important. Along with that, we are recognizing essential workers and showing them some love, allowing them to share their story, and again, just telling them how grateful we are for all that they do. Well, Garcia, let me come to you. I uh, The last time I talked to you guys, I, and I keep thinking about this. Out of all the shows, you guys were the ones that said you actually don't mind this format of kind of a Zoom format, like what people are watching on now, that you guys have actually used it to your advantage and had better conversations. Mm -hmm. Are you still kind of feeling that, Garcelle? Oh, absolutely. The conversations that we've been able to have, not only about how we're managing doing a an amazing show from home, but I feel like we're also connecting. We're connecting with our guests. We're having great conversations that I feel like you can't find in other shows. And uh, it's been really, really great. And we're also showing America that, because everybody's working from home. So we're showing yeah. everybody that we're doing it too. And you know, we're having so fun relatable. at the same time. Yeah. It is. Okay, something else that's debatable. If we can be a little, have a little fun for just a second. Jeannie, you guys are debating something that we, my executive producer, talks about more than the show, and that's air fryers. Who, are you guys just <laughs> discovering the love of the air fryer? Can you talk to my friends is. about this, Jason? Expand more on how you can be so late to the game. Everybody talks about, like, it's been the best thing since sliced bread. No, friends, it's been the best thing since reheating your food and actually putting a crispy edge to it. Cookies, you. apple cobblers, fried turkey, come Everything. on. Everything. Thank you. I want to be friends with everything. everything. Oh, seriously, Jeannie, I use, this is no joke, I use the air fryer more than any other appliance in my house, period. Yes. Really? Yes. Same. It's completely yeah. replaced my, my microwave because I've even, I've even makeshifted ways to microwave things in my air fryer by using, like, you know, bowls or, like, foil in order to... Aluminum like, foil. You know, it can take, it's, I got some tricks. I got some pro tips for you. Ah. Perfect. Okay, Lonnie, I'm showing you some love. So I love you normally on the real, but I was really, really full of Lonnie love during Drag Race. You gave me life. Um, it's cold up here. It's like polar bear weather up here. And I was loving Lonnie on oh. RuPaul. What was, what was that like? You are so sweet. Thank you, Jason. It is a ball. You know, we love this show because we're able to do other things outside of it and then yeah. we bring it back. So Drag Race was one of that. You know, Jeannie Dancing with the Stars. Munchkin has her Fox shows. Then Garcelle is our movie star with Coming to America, too. So we share all of that when, you know, we come back to our, you know, beloved show, um, which is The Real. And um, it's just it's just fabulous to be able to do these opportunities but also to have a home base that we can talk about it and promote it it's just wonderful and i feel yeah. like we get to share the behind the scenes tips here yes the behind the scenes yes stuff here. this is where we really what you don't hear see what it's like for adrian to work with her co-stars and garcelle what it's like on set what rupaul's really like like this is where we come home to like our real fam yeah yes and if i may before we go garcelle speaking of coming to america too Looking at you on that trailer, gorgeous, like stu stunning. Like, I'm going to put extra yes. syllables in stunning. Stun, ning, ning, ning. <laughs> Thank ning you, Jason. <laughs> You're so sweet. It was surreal to be yeah. back on, on set. It was really surreal, but thank you. And we're working know, on we had coming to funny. America two week uh, here at The Real. So yep. look out for it. Mm. Oh, see, It'll oh be what a is special that? special week. It'll be <laughs> special. We've got some up. surprises up our sleeve. Yeah. We've got a lot okay. of surprises. 
uh, uh, Jason, we're giving away money to our essential workers. Yes, we are. We're, you know, saluting all of our cultures. We're talking about, you know, conversations that most people, you know, don't get to hear from women of color. So the real yep. really is in the seventh season doing the thing that we need to do, which is cover everybody's culture, give everybody a better understanding. We've had Kamala Harris come on twice. We've had Elizabeth Warren, but we still have the fun and the spice that we need. And we just, and we're personal. And you can tell, you know, the chemistry between us ladies is just yeah. wonderful. It's and real. I think that's what makes a good show. Yeah. Well, I love you guys. And again, anytime I get to talk to you, it's going to be a good day. So I love you. Continued success to all of you. And we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you Jason. so much. Bye. Thank you, Jason. Bye. Bye. Fox. This is what that was like, and I apologize. Looking at my big potato head for four minutes. Don't miss the real weekdays at one on Fox 9, or check your local listing. <laughs> Still ahead, everybody. Auditions don't always go as planned, and for some actors, that ends up being a very good thing. We'll tell you why when we come back. Back in a moment. Wow, big potato head. So you've actually never been to a real school before? Shut up. Shut up! I didn't say anything. Homeschooled. That's really interesting. Thanks. But you're like really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty? Oh, I don't know. <gasps> oh my god, I love your bracelet. Where did you get it? Oh, my mom made it for me. It's adorable. Oh, it's so fetch. What is fetch? Oh, it's like slang from England. <laughs> slang from England. Who can forget that scene from Mean Girls, which came out 17. Oh. No. Yep. 17 years ago. <laughs> 17 years and ago. I still know every line of that movie. Yeah. Oh. Well, welcome back, everyone. It's hard. Welcome back to Big Head and Beautiful Lady. Um, <laughs> it's hard to imagine anyone but Lindsay Lohan and Rachel McAdams not playing those iconic roles, but this was great. A new BuzzFeed article reveals 21 movie, actor, movie actors who were cast in an entirely different role than they auditioned for. So we thought you would like this. Did you know that Lindsay Lohan actually auditioned to play the role of Regina George, head of the plastics? And Rachel McAdams auditioned for the lead role of Caddy. Did you know that? No. Uh, it's Katie. Katie. Um, what did I say? Caddy? Katie. That's the uh, like, line from the show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but after the success of the movie Freaky Friday, Paramount Studios wanted Lohan as the lead. That makes sense. I can't see it the other way, honestly. No, not at all. I know by the end, she becomes a plastic, but still, no, it works. It works so paramount. Well. Executives and bosses don't always know the right thing, but they do there, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Not you, Jeff, you are always right. Next up, Harry Potter, <laughs> the Harry Potter, Tom Felton, who played the young villain Draco in the movie franchise, originally auditioned for the role of Harry, and Ron, and Ron, before landing the Draco role, Felton later said he was grateful to not get those roles because his life would have been very, very different. Like we would have known who he was today? Well, yeah, I think he has... Oh. Ow! I'm sorry. Shane's Venom. Can you get me some Kleenex? Shane's Venom. didn't want his name remembered forever. Well, you know... I don't know. I don't remember his name. Did you? Tom You're Felton. A big like. Yeah, I like and I like person. the Harry Pooter and I follow Tom. I like him on You're Instagram. You're adding an extra O. The Harry Pooter, that's how I say it, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, that's the kind of fame I think all of us would like. You're famous and you got some cash in the bank, but you can still go to Target. <laughs> that's true. You know what I mean? That's, that's the kind of fame I think everyone would like. You and know? I, you just reminded me, my worst misspeak ever anchoring. Yeah. I called it Harry Potty. Which is a really, it's not good. No, that's, an, that's not a that's good a, visual. That's a, so when you keep saying Harry Pooter, I'm like, I keep going back. You're taking me back. That's a film you find behind the curtain. That's it's not right. It's the same movie, guys. That's a movie you need an ID for. <laughs> Next, the late uh, Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman. He originally auditioned for the role of Drax. Is it Drax? Yeah. In Guardians of the Galaxy before becoming Black Panther. That's fun. And finally, the movie Frozen. Both Adina Menzel and Kristen Bell originally auditioned for the role of Rapunzel in Disney's Tangled. A few years later, they became sisters, Elsa and Anna, in Frozen. Yeah, 
Oh, I can see Kristen Bell doing Rapunzel. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Without, without a doubt. And did <laughs> you know that they wanted Betty White to play Blanche in the Golden Girls? Wait. Isn't she Blanche? Wait. <laughs> My time here was short. Where's Kendall? Yeah, I know, right? Let me call Kendall. Shane, you know, I just... I lasted 42 minutes. You, you did. You did. <laughs> it's longer than it's longer than Kendall lasts sometimes. <laughs> Still ahead, a local entrepreneur puts her own spin on denim with Shane's replacement, Kendall. When we come back, back in a moment. What's happening? Betty White was Rose. <laughs> Betty White was. Ro Let's make it a good day. Beautiful woman in my Oprah mug. That's right. My beautiful mug here. I love it. It's a gift from my executive producer and dear friend Jeff. You are from really kissing up today. Did you do something bad? Well, no, I mean to him 340 days a year. That's you know true. what I mean? Every so yeah. often I want to be nice to him, you know? Yeah. So it's from the Oprah Winfrey show. They used to sell this. Not that Oprah needed the money, but yeah. Denim is something that will never go out of style. Some some denim will. <laughs> and one local woman is putting a new spin on denim, creating, creating custom denim jackets. And her work is getting her noticed. Kendall introduces us to the woman behind the jean shop. First off, Sarah Jean, yes. congratulations on having such a great last name to Thank open you. the jean shop. Do you think this was something that you had to do just because of your last name? I'm being 100% serious, where yeah. you're like, I should probably do this. Well, Esther, I always kind of think of like different side things that I can do in hobbies, and I always tell my friends like, Oh, I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna do a skincare brand. I'm gonna do protein balls. And then finally I came up with jean jackets and I was like, I think this one I have to do because of my last name. This isn't your full-time gig though. I think this is really interesting. I'm a social content specialist in advertising. So that's my full-time job and this I just do nights and weekends. If it does become full-time, I think that'd be absolutely amazing and a dream. Um, to have a little storefront in the North Loop or something would be super fun. Just next to Madewell, right? Lululemon, Sarah Jean. The there it Jean is. Shop. Okay, so jean jackets in general, they kind of went out of style. They're coming back in. So are you hopping on this like right then and there or have you always liked doing this? I always have enjoyed jean jackets, um, but I love how on trend they're becoming lately too, and especially within the seasons. So I launched in the fall, which was like peak jean jacket season. Um, and then hopefully in the spring, it'll come back around too. You were just in the Galleria. Yes. That's really cool yeah. as a new artist, especially. Tell me about what that was like. Um, Lab Minneapolis actually reached out to me on Instagram. I think it was a month in or just a few weeks into launching. And they offered to be a partner and a collaborator within that. And it was just a really cool experience to see my jean jackets in the Galleria. And then it was a really great community too of local makers to see everyone that became a part of it. Is this the original jacket? This is the first one. Tell yep. me about this bad boy because I absolutely love it. Feeling it, it feels different than I thought it would, yep. and I, but I like it. Yep. It was kind of what started it all, and I created it for myself to start, and then realized I had all these other ideas to And continue. that people liked it. <laughs> yeah, people actually liked it, and I was like, oh, okay. It was definitely a learning curve right away to figure out how to paint on denim versus a canvas yeah. and using um, fabric medium. And then as far as sewing, it was definitely a, a few holes in my fingers and pokes and prods right away. But yeah, it's, it's gotten down to um, just to be really fun and to add these little personal touches to jean jackets. We've got pins, we've got a board, we've got a yeah. hand drawn. Walk me through this. How does Absolutely. this work? <laughs> Basically what I'll do is I'll sketch out the design on paper. And then you'll see here, I've just kind of created loose markings of where mm -hmm. the drawings will be. This gets more detailed once I begin painting, but that way I can at least have like some sort of general neat mark out of where I'll be painting and then I add in detail with the brush later. Oh, that's so cool. Thanks. Probably helps to be an artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, you just sketch that up and then you cut it out and then you paint it in. Okay. Yep. And then if you, you do this first and if somebody wants thrills and frills, then you put that on you afterwards? Yeah. I just want a really cool jean jacket. Mom, it's almost my birthday. Okay. I think every generation has their denim. You know what I mean? Has their jean trend. 
Like for me, and I'm 46, 46 and uncool, according to that guy on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I had, we, we, we did the pirate. We, we uh, did the tapering of our jeans. You know what I mean? Uh, we folded the jean. What was it called, Jeff? The pirate. Legging. Really uh, I forgot what they called. Anyway, you folded your jean and you rolled them up. And yeah, and it was it's supposed to be tapered. So oh, you did okay. that. You couldn't wear just straight leg jeans. No, 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 no. You would be ostracized. But no, that was our trend. I remember having the jean jacket with the little puff here. The puffs, yes. Like when I was younger, yeah. Yeah. And it was that stone washed. Oh, yeah, we had stone washed. I wish I'd kept that. Karis could wear it. You know, the, the store that I, I miss in a mall is County Seat. Did you guys have a county seat here? And walk, did you have a Waka Waka Washington? We didn't have much of anything. <laughs> I'm not going to sell the shopping in Wenatchee. That's not why you go. Wenatchee, by the way. Wenatchee, I'm so sorry. Close. It's a waka waka. I forgot. But <laughs> did we, did Jeff, did they have county seats here in Minnesota? Yeah, because I didn't grow up here, but yeah. County, county seat. County seat was it's a denim store. It's not the actual store. county seat of no, like, it was a, the county. It, purely a denim store. Yeah. Oh. They sold, you know, they sold all the things, but mainly it, the bread and butter was jeans. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to learn more about the jean shop, check them out on Instagram or Facebook. Check them out at at Gene Shop Minneapolis or MPLS. We'll be right back. Stay with us, everybody. That's how you Chef King. Love Chef King. Chef King? Yeah, Chef King. Yeah. We're just here gossiping. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, don't forget, you can uh, sign up to be a part of our virtual audience like our friend Lindsay today from Chan Hassan. Just go to the Jason Show Facebook page. Uh, it's just Jason Show TV, and the link is at the top. Sign up for a certain day, and you can be a part of our show until we can bring audience back, which I can't wait for that day. Speaking of Lindsay, she has a question for us. I, we ask the audience for questions now. You ready? Yes. She wants to know, hey, Shane, hey, Jason, how did you get started in television? The answer would we return. Back in a moment. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Dan and I were just talking. So many restaurants come and go. One of them in downtown Minneapolis that I really miss, Rosa Mexicana. It's a chain, but a smaller chain, family owned. They, they had little margaritas like this big. And you were like, oh, they're pink. They're not going to do anything with you. You drink one and you're quacking like a Venom. duck. Venom. Yeah. You're acting like you're, you're imitating animals after one of them. Anyway, uh, let's go to Lindsay. Say goodbye to Lindsay. And Lindsay from Chanhassen, you asked us a question. You wanted to know uh, how we got started in TV, right? Okay, Shane, ladies first. How did you get started, my friend? I was always into watching the news, even as a little girl, which is a little odd. But then I started doing weather forecasts for my family, and my pseudo name was Shane Starkweather. Oh. Yep. Shane is that Starkweather. on record? Can we, Ted, can we keep it? <laughs> Ted, to keep this tape, please. Keep this tape. We're on so it. So I yeah. did a lot of weather broadcasts for my family. Went to school for it, and it was a fit. Shane Starkweather. Oh, that Should is I have gone with it? gorgeous. I love that. <laughs> um, look, I've said it millions of times, but um, I've, I, I, I'm very lucky. Never vacillated on what I wanted to do. I was a little kid doing a show on a rock in front of my Papa Earl's house of Betty and Earl's, uh, Betty and Earl, my Papa and my grandma, and uh, playing Johnny Carson. So when my friends in high school were like, I don't know what I want to do, I, I didn't know what that felt like. I was very lucky. I always knew. Not worried about how I was going to get here. Stumbled into this. Uh, stumbled into radio and one thing kind of led to another and I got to Channel 9 in 2000 and yeah, there we go. So I just always, always wanted to do it. And everything was just kind of, you know, one job would lead to another. Like I, I was at CCO, I was introduced to Kevin Berger there. Kevin Berger got a radio show on My Talk 1071. Kevin Berger had me on to do movie reviews. The bosses there liked me, gave me a show. Then, you know, I was promoted here, started the buzz anchored the 4.30 a.m. news with Dawn Stevens. Uh, not Dawn, <laughs> the hours. I was, you know, Dawn and I, oh, God, we had some, some fun. But, yeah, so. The door is always opened for you. The door, oh, like to return? Your, no, to keep, like, to oh. keep progressing, you know? It was like, oh, that, there we oh, go. Oh, I'm, now, we're, I, once I'm done, I'm, I'm going to, I said I'm going to retire at, in Key West. I'm going to be a bartender. Whoa, 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 what happened to South Fork? I can build it there. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lindsay, thank you for your question, sweetie. I appreciate it, and, uh, and thanks for joining us. Tomorrow on the show, Michaela, who Shane just talked to, Michaela Holmgren, oh, my girlfriend, will join us. And she wants to be in Sports Illustrated. That's right. She has dream 
she, she is one that has no limits of her dreams. Plus, she's my dream. Stephanie Hansen will return. <laughs> my foodie queen. She has many dreams, too. We'll try to make those come true, too. Uh, right now, though, if you are watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you're doing it wrong. Shane, it Jason, was a delight to see you again. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. <laughs>